Hello, everybody. How are you all today? I am Mrs. Arnold, and today we are going to be doing our lesson from Brain Pop. So we will go um, into a YouTube video first. We're going to watch a YouTube video on sentence structure because we're working with compound, simple, and complex sentences. So our YouTube video will be on sentence structure, and then we will um, watch our brain pop video, which is on the Salem witch trials. And then our related reading is also um, on the Salem witch trials. And so um, after we complete our videos, and then we go into that related reading and complete that, then you we will end with your assignment. So please have some paper and pencil handy for your assignment and also to take notes, especially um, during the sentence structure video, since your, um, your assignment is going to be on that topic, sentence structure. Okay, and so at this time, I'm going to share my screen with you. Oops. Oh. Okay, let's bring up our video. Well, let me organize my screen here. Get, okay, this is our first video that we're going to view. And I already told you it's on sentence structure. So let's begin. Um, the four types of sentences we're going to discuss today. Hey there, it's Elizabeth O'Brien from Grammar Revolution, where we help you teach and learn grammar the easy way with sentence diagrams. When we categorize sentences based on structure, we find that there are four sentence structures. Simple, compound, complex, and compound complex. We will look at each of those in just a moment, but before we do that, we need to have a little lesson on clauses. Clauses are groups of words that have both a subject and a verb. And there are two main types. Independent clauses can stand alone as complete thoughts, and dependent clauses or subordinate clauses cannot stand alone as complete thoughts. And if you look at those examples, we have I kicked the ball for an independent clause. That uh, group of words has a subject, I, it has a verb, kicked, and the whole thing can stand alone as a complete thought. I kicked the ball. That is an independent clause. We could also call that a sentence. It is a sentence made with one independent clause. Now let's look at the example of the dependent clause. When I kicked the ball, it still has a subject, I, it still has a verb, kicked, but now it cannot stand alone as a complete thought. So it is dependent or subordinate. So it's important to understand clauses before we study sentence structure because the four different sentence structures are basically just different combinations of those two types of clauses. Let's check it out. Simple sentences are made of just one independent clause. I kicked the ball is a simple sentence. It has one independent clause. Compound sentences are made up of two or more independent clauses. I kicked the ball and it hit Tom. I kicked the ball is an independent clause and it hit Tom is also an independent clause. Complex sentences are made of one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. Tom cried because the ball hit him. Tom cried is an independent clause and because the ball hit him is a dependent clause. And last but not least, compound complex sentences are made up of two or more independent clauses and one or more dependent clauses. Tom cried because the ball hit him and I apologized immediately. Tom cried and I apologized immediately are independent clauses and because the ball hit him is a dependent clause. So that is a compound complex sentence. Now, if you are having a hard time with any of this, I'm guessing it's because you need to learn a little bit more about dependent clauses, because there is more to learn about dependent clauses. So if you are struggling, my suggestion is to study dependent clauses until you can easily identify those in sentences. 
there you have it. The four sentence structures are basically just different combinations of independent and dependent clauses. If you would like to learn more about teaching or learning grammar the easy way with sentence diagrams, you can check out our website or our awesome Get Smart Grammar program where I will teach you all about this stuff in step-by-step -step video lessons. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay. Get rid of that now. That completes that video on our um, sentence structures. We're right now going to focus in more on the three types of sentence structure the compound, the simple, and the complex. And so now I'm going to begin our brain pop video. Put the closed captions on. Look, it's pretty simple. If you float, you'll know you're a witch. But if you sink, you're innocent. Yeah, so I'm gonna say a witch. Dear Nat and Moby, were there really witches in Salem, Massachusetts? Thanks, Ms. Kathleen's class. Well, plenty of people thought there were back in the late 1600s. It all started when 11-year-old Abigail Williams began having mysterious fits, screaming, twitching, collapsing in a heap on the floor. The symptoms soon got worse and spread to her cousin, nine-year-old Betty Paris. The girls lived with Betty's father, Reverend Samuel Paris. He brought in a doctor who said they were under an evil hand. Back then in Salem, Massachusetts, that was considered a real cause of illness. The colony had been founded by Puritans, a Christian sect who believed God had chosen them to create a pure society. Their way of life was incredibly strict and all about the church. On Sundays, you couldn't work, do chores, or hang out with friends. Even Christmas was banned. The Puritans weren't fans of frivolous holidays. Everyone was committed to creating a community without sin. So if anything bad happened, the Puritans believed they'd been attacked by evil, AKA the devil. He would give certain humans magic powers in exchange for their souls. Then those people, witches, would act against others on the devil's behalf. After the doctor's visit, the girls started pointing fingers at their supposed attackers. All were older women and outsiders. Sarah Osborne was sick and bedridden, Sarah Good was homeless, and Tichuba was enslaved by the Paris family. Gossip in the village said she practiced voodoo and fortune telling. And so began history's wildest witch hunt, which swept Salem village like a fever in 1692. In less than a year, hundreds were accused of witchcraft and thrown in jail. 19 were convicted as witches and hanged, and one was crushed to death. Yeah, today it seems almost impossible to believe, but the Puritans felt the threat of evil all around them. They were surrounded by Native people who they believed worshipped the devil. They thought Native customs and rituals were witchcraft. Relations with Native people were strained and often erupted into violence. Of course, that was mainly because colonists kept snatching up more and more land. Well, the Puritans might have felt the hand of evil in other ways, too. A recent outbreak of smallpox had killed hundreds of colonists. So the British king had tried to take away their religious freedom just a few years before. And towns nearby were becoming less and less religious. So Salem Village doubled down on its faith. They hired a strict conservative minister to run their church. That was Samuel Paris, the same guy whose daughter and niece had been acting mm. so strangely. Hmm. Well, purity yeah, children weren't right. allowed to act like kids. They were expected to be quiet and obedient at all times. So it must have been a thrill for Betty and Abigail to suddenly be the talk of the town. Soon, other girls began suffering the same symptoms. A hearing was held to examine the three accused witches. 600 people, more than the entire population of Salem, showed up to watch. Osborne and Good denied the charges, even as their accusers twitched and screamed at their feet. But Tichuba confessed. She said Osborne and Good were witches too, 
that they told her to attack the girls. Well, historians believe Tichuba was beaten by Paris and forced to confess. Admitting to witchcraft would also save her life. Those who confessed were usually allowed to live so they could identify other witches. That's probably why Tichuba kept adding details to her story to satisfy the judges. She said the devil had come to her and promised her nice things if she signed his book. She also said she'd see nine other marks in the devil's book. Yep, that meant nine more witches were doing the devil's work in Salem. <laughs> Tichuba, Good, and Osborne were thrown in jail to await official trials. Meanwhile, panic and fear spread like wildfire as more and more people were accused. Within a few months, the girls had named dozens of witches. Almost all the names were older women who didn't fit into Puritan society. They didn't go to church, or they had bad manners or strong opinions. They were unmarried or widows or owned property without a man in charge. A woman named Bridget Bishop checked all the boxes. She'd been married several times, ran a tavern, spoke her mind, and wore a shocking red getup. The governor set up a special court for the witch trials, and Bishop was up first. In court, the case against her was almost all spectral evidence. These were visions or dreams about the evil deeds of the accused witch. Several girls testified that they had seen the ghost of Bishop pinching, choking, or biting them. That was enough to convict her, and Bishop was hanged the next week. That summer, 17 more met the same fate, including Sarah Good. Sarah Osborne and several others died awaiting trial. A four-year-old girl was accused in jail, but she saved her life by confessing. 81-year-old Giles Corey, one of the few men accused, refused to participate in a trial. He was tortured, crushed to death by heavy stones over several days. Well, when Rebecca Nurse, a religious mother of eight, was accused, a petition went around challenging it. Many even testified in her defense at the trial. The jury found her not guilty, but reversed their decision under pressure, and Nurse was hanged. Everyone was on edge. If Nurse could be executed, no one was safe. The tide really started to turn after a minister was hanged. Mm -hmm. Authorities began to express doubts about spectral evidence. By fall, the community realized they'd gone too far and changed course. The court was disbanded, and most prisoners awaiting trial were released. Soon after, the governor pardoned all accused witches and made payments to their families. But it was different for Tichuba. Paris didn't want her back, so she stayed in jail and was later sold away. The witch trials caused a crisis in the Puritan community. How could they have lost their way so terribly? A whole town deciding their neighbors were evil and condemning them to die? Based on the stories of a few kids desperate for attention. The Puritan faith didn't last long after that. Yeah, you sometimes still hear about so-called witch hunts. Campaigns that use fear to target people with unpopular ideas, like the Red Scare, which swept the nation in the 1950s. Suddenly, everyone was looking for communist spies, and Congress held hearings to root out those in government. Lives were ruined based on little or no evidence. Playwright Arthur Miller compared the panic to Salem in his play, The Crucible. It's still popular today, and a reminder of how history can repeat itself of how easy it is for a society to blame its problems on the vulnerable, outcasts, immigrants, religious or racial minorities. So, what do you say we... Moby? God! <laughs> yep. Okay, so there we have it. And I... I must say that was very interesting. Um, if I must say so myself, I've learned a bit. I know a little of this story, but some of the information I wasn't aware of. And um, yeah, the Salem Witch Trials. And so now we will go into our related reading and we have the quirky, quirky stuff today. 
as I read. Just wanted to make sure. So let us begin. Quirky stuff. Salem's witch court mostly relied on spectral evidence, accusers' visions of the alleged witch's evil deeds. But in witch hunts throughout history, a wide variety of methods have been used to prove suspects are in league with the devil. One, would these tests hold up in today's courts? You be the judge. Witch cakes. English folklore suggested that the best way to detect evil magic was by using more magic. Anyone could identify a witch by baking a cake made of rye and the victim urine. Hmm. The cake would be fed to a dog since dogs were thought to be the devil's helpers. What? If the dog displayed the same symptoms as the victim, like making strange sounds or staring as if in a trance, then that confirmed the witch was at work. Hmm. The dog would then sing out the guilty party or they would fall sick. Those were the witch cakes. Swimming test. This practice involved this practice involved the binding suspect's hands and feet and throwing them into a body of water. Oh, I guess that's what this was. If they were guilty, the water would reject their evil spirits, causing them to float to the surface. If they were innocent, they sink, often drowning before they could be pulled out. So no matter what the verdict, the consequences for the accused could be fatal. There we have it. That's the swimming test, which is marks. The Puritans believed that there were the Pur the Puritans believed there were so many witches in Salem that the devil needed a way to keep track of them. So when a witch made a covenant a covenant with it when the witch made a covenant with the devil he left an identifying mark on her body scars moles and birthmarks could all be construed as a witch's mark suspected witches were examined from head to toe in search of incriminated incriminating blemishes given how common these marks are salem officials often found them when they went looking. Prayer test. In the 17th century, it was common knowledge that witches were incapable of reciting passages from the Bible. Many witch trials forced scared illiterate defendants to recount verses from memory. Uh, any hesitation, stammer, or error could send a person to the gallows. Yet, even a perfect recitation, even a perfect recitation, wasn't enough to save a suspected witch. Hmm. A Salem's minister's flawless recitation of the Lord's Prayer before his execution. Oh, that was the, yeah, there was a minister. So yet yeah, even a perfect recitation wasn't enough to save the suspected witch. A Salem minister's flawless recitation of the Lord's Prayer before his execution should have proven his innocence. Instead, it was dismissed as a trick of the devil, and he was killed anyway. Wow, they were br brutal, huh? Mm -mm -mm. I, don't, I doubt that would pass our courts today or hold up in our courts. But very, very interesting stuff. 
And so this is where you are going to get your assignment from. And before we, um, before I go into your assignment, let me review with you, give you a couple of, re or a few reminders of our sentences, sentence structures. Our um, simple sentence has one independent clause, which is a complete thought. So it's a complete thought, one independent clause. Our compound sentence has two or more independent clauses, um, which is the complete thought. So they have one, two or more complete thoughts for our compound sentence. And then our complex sentence has one or more independent clause, which is a complete thought, and one or more dependent clause, which is an incomplete thought. And so that's our compound. It's a, I mean, our complex is a combination of both. And so um, for our assignment students, please check out the paper you set aside. And from our quirky stuff reading, I would like for you to write one simple sentence, one compound sentence, and one complex sentence. And that is your assignment for this exercise. And um, I would like to also ask you, please write your name legibly on your paper, write your full name, your first name and your last name, no nicknames, and make sure it can be read so your papers can count. So, you know, you can, um, we can grade it and know who we are grading and your grade can count. And so um, once you have completed all your work, students, please hand it in to staff. Staff, once you have collected all completed work from all students, can you please take it to the PBX admin building? And thank you for your support. Your help is always appreciated. Students, thank you for coming on another learning journey with me. This was very interesting, our Salem witch trials. Wish you enjoyed it as much as I did and um, learned something. I, I always learn something from these, this one I definitely learned from some things I didn't know and you're never too old to learn. So thank you for that. And until our next lesson together, please be well and be safe. See you on the next one.